What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an awesome free resource that you can download from the Blender Studio for creating fire and explosions. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, and so I'm gonna to link to this in the notes down below so that you can find it and download it, but this is an asset that was actually created to be used as a part of the Blender charge film and it's now available to download for free on the Blender Studio website. So basically what you can do is you can open up this page, you can click on the option for download in order to download this asset or this setup. Now, one other thing to note about this is this is released free, but it's released under a buy attribution license. And so you can click on this in order to see what that means. And so when you click over on this, this is going to tell you what the actual license usage is. So you can share, copy, redistribute. You can also adapt this, but you have to do it under the terms where you give appropriate credit provide a link to the license and indicate if changes were made. Um, so you have to do that in a clear and reasonable manner. You can read through this to see the specifics of what the license is. You do need to provide attribution if you do use these assets. And so this is super cool. Um, it's actually really smart. So basically what it is, is it's a procedural setup for gen generating explosions and smoke, um, but it's using sprite animation. So it's using like 2D um, images for that animation animation rather than simulation, making it super, super fast. And so I'm not going to pretend that I understand everything about what it's doing or anything like that, but it's super cool and uh, we can take a look at it and I'll at least show you how you can kind of open it up, start messing around with it and making changes and how you can uh, save it as an asset. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the file. So it's a blend file. Okay, and so when you first open it up, it's gonna look something like this. Actually, when you first open it up, it might look like this right here, which is a little bit confusing until you think about what it's doing. So currently we are in um, solid mode. And what we wanna do is we wanna tap the Z key and we wanna go over to either material preview or rendered mode. And then it's gonna look something like this. Um, but that solid mode does give us kind of an interesting clue for what's going on. So say that we were to run this animation right here in solid mode. Notice what it's doing is it's generating a ton of these sprite sheets that are in here, right? So it's just generating different instances of these 2D images. That's how we're kind of getting that smoke and fire look. If I tap the Z key and go to material preview and then click play, it's going to look like this. But basically what this is doing is this is generating those sprite sheets in here and you can kind of see it just by clicking on this. You can kind of see the outline of those sheets. Um, but what this means is this means that whether I'm in material preview mode or an Eevee, notice how this renders out really, really quickly. So I can move this around um, and it's basically updating in real time on my computer, right? Because it's not doing like a volumetric simulation. It's simulating the look of each one of these things directly inside a blender without calculating volumes. And so this is super cool because these are actually built on top of geometry nodes. And so let's say that we were to select the smoke right here, go over into our geometry node settings, there's actually things that you can adjust, right? So you can adjust like the spread of the smoke, like how it spreads using the spread function right here. You can set the amount of wind, which is going to affect the direction that that smoke is going. So you can basically in real time, um, randomize and adjust this. You can set the resolution. Um, so notice if I bring the resolution down, right? It's only gonna generate a few of these sprite sheets. If I bring that up, so notice when you bring it down, by the way, you can kind of see what this is doing, right? It's taking these smoke images and it's generating them. And so it's taking these images and I'm not sure if these are images inside of Blender or if these are little animated sheets. I think they might be animated sheets, but it's just generating a whole bunch of them in here, right? And if I click off of this, you can see it a little bit better, but it's just generating a whole bunch of those. The more or the higher the resolution, the more of these this is going to generate. So you can use this to generate a lot of smoke or a little bit of smoke. And so that is going to be the smoke. You've also got other animations in here. So you've got the fire, for example. The fire, you can do the same thing, right? You can bring the resolution down and you're gonna get a little bit of fire. You can bring the resolution up, you're gonna get a lot of fire in here. And so again, you can adjust things like the rise and the spread 
Um, this is something that I've seen a lot in like Unreal Engine or Unity um, for generating animations like this without um, without you having to go in there and actually do the simulations themselves. But you can adjust this one. You can also adjust these explosions. So for the explosions, so this is interesting because you can adjust things like the speed of that animation, right? So when you adjust the speed, notice what that's doing is that's adjusting how far out these are going to be generated right here. So you could adjust the speed here and then maybe the duration. And so if you adjust the duration, notice how this is kind of changing the way that 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 explosion is generated in here. So you can use this to generate these really realistic looking explosions in here um, really quickly. So you can set like the initial direction, you can adjust the variation, right? Because it's basically taking these sprites and it's animating them outward along these paths like this. You can also set if you want some wind or something like that here at the end. Um, so you can adjust that as well. And then there's also a battery explosion that's gonna act the same way. But uh, what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to set these as assets so that you can bring them into your own projects. Right, so I'm gonna pause this real quick. And so basically all you have to do to set these as assets, and I've already done it, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. So I'm gonna clear these assets real quick. But if you wanna generate these as assets, because they're, they're in collections over here in your current file, um, yours may look like this. Um, so to find those collections, you can just click on this button right here in order to filter by type. But then notice how we've got the different types in here. Well, what I can do is I can right click and I can mark these as assets, right? And so when I mark these as assets like this, that means that they're gonna start showing up in the asset browser. So if I was to go into my asset browser right here and look at my current file, notice how those collections are going to show up. Now, that's great. And we wanna make sure that we save this file after we do this. Now what we wanna do is we wanna set up Blender so that it references these assets so that you can bring them in from the browser. So I'm gonna start by creating a new file right here. And what I wanna do is I wanna to go to my edit preferences and inside of my asset libraries, right? That's gonna be under file paths. So I wanna click on the plus button and I wanna go find the folder where that Blender file is. In this case, it's saved in this folder right here and I'm gonna click on add asset library. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to assets, free fire and smoke generator. The other thing I'm going to do, you don't have to do this, but I like to do this is I like to bring these in as appended as opposed to appended reused data. Um, if you bring them in as appended reused data, what that means is they're all going to come in linked. And so if you change one, they're all going to change, which is usually not what I want for something like this. So now I've got this set up as append. We can go ahead and we can open up our asset browser. So now if I go in the asset browser, I want to find assets, free fire and smoke. Well, notice how those are now showing up in this list right here. So if I bring them in, right, if I drag one of them in, it's going to have that explosion in here. Now, one thing that's gonna be important though, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit the space key so you can kind of see this. Notice how I can select this, but it's not actually allowing me to edit it, right? So um, that's a little bit of a problem because I need to be able to come in here and adjust the settings of the object. Well, all you have to do is when you bring these in, right, when you first drag these in, to your scene, notice how it pops up this little window in here for add collection. You wanna make sure that you uncheck the box for instance. So when you do that, now notice how I can access this object and I can adjust the um, settings in here, right? So I can adjust my count right here, all those different things. And so that's gonna work the same way for like the smoke generator, right? You wanna make sure the box for, un or, um, for instance is unchecked when you do this, but now, if I run my animation, notice how it's animating this in my brand new scene using these as assets. So I would recommend that you set these up as assets because then you can start using them in your scenes as well. All right, so I'm a massive fan of the way these are set up because they're so lightweight. They're super cool um, in the way that you can use them in Blender, but you don't have to deal with the simulations which can take forever to render. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about these. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.